Uh, I'm here today to talk to you a little bit about the technologies that we've been installing in the technology enhanced classrooms, which are the rooms that are typically with a podium and a projection system across campus. Uh, we've installed a couple of different technologies that should be useful for, for you to uh, help uh, integrate students uh, that happen to be rem uh, remote to your class to help give them an experience that is better than your standard webcam on, uh, on your computer. Uh, we're going to discuss those technologies today. The first piece of technology I wanted to talk to you about is the Logitech Meetup camera uh, that we've attached to an articulating arm onto the podium. Uh, you can take the camera, easily turn it to face the board. So if you wish to show uh, your, uh, you working at the board or you lecturing at the uh, podium, this is how you would do it. You take the camera, turn it, point it in the direction you need it to, and you'll be able to uh, uh, go wherever you need to. If you turn it towards the classroom, if you want to get the classroom more involved in a discussion, that works as well. Uh, the camera also tilts up and down and uh, can be spun in almost 360 degrees. One thing to note is that facilities management is installing uh, plexiglass shields uh, across campus. Uh, if you have any questions regarding the plexiglass uh, uh, guards, please contact facilities management and they'll answer any questions or listen to any of your feedback you may have about that. Uh, the other piece of technology that will be incorporated into the classroom is something that already actually uh, has existed. Uh, there are document cameras uh, in most of these technology enhanced classrooms and they actually allow for uh, uh, they have a digital output on them so we're able to connect them to the resident computer uh, utilizing uh, the USB and it actually becomes a video source so if you need to zoom in uh, your students and uh, you would prefer to either write down or show something uh, you can select the Wolf Vision document camera as a uh, source to show that. Uh, one thing to note though, if you're going to use the document camera uh, in the classroom uh, with people remote, you will need to have, uh, you will have to have zoom up uh, on, your, on the resident computer full screen and that will show up on the board or on the projection screen uh, and it will show up uh, for the students watching on zoom as well. Uh, traditionally, uh, you would select a source, you, uh, the document camera on the touch screen, and then the video from the document camera would show up on the projection screen. Uh, that still works if all, uh, all your students and the faculty member are in the classroom together. Uh, obviously, if that's the situation, you wouldn't uh, necessarily need uh, to use the, uh, the uh, uh, meetup camera and the Wolf Vision for Zoom. Uh, obviously, we're dealing with a couple different scenarios here. Uh, if you know we're doing the blended learning with students remote but professor in the room, that's where that will become in handy. If for uh, whatever reason the faculty member is remote but some students are in the classroom, uh, some students may be asked to take the camera, face it towards the students in the space. They'd have to join Zoom on the resident computer and utilize it that way. So one thing to note about the uh, meetup camera attached to the articulating arm, there is actually a remote control that will be in each classroom with the, uh, with the camera. Now it's very important that this remote stays in the same room as the camera. These do not work with other meetup cameras, so they are paired together. Please, if you can remember, leave this on the podium so that other faculty members will have access to it uh, as, we, uh, as their classes begin. I'm going to set up a new meeting here and we're going to then select the different sources uh, of the meetup camera and the document camera and you can see how to select them, how to, uh, and how to uh, set up shots utilizing the meetup camera and double checking to make sure your audio is correct for both sources. So I'm going to start a new meeting here. I'm going to go ahead and go into full screen. If you go down to the start video button, there is a small carrot next to that button. And you can see that we have three 
different sources available to us. Uh, one being the Logitech Meetup camera, one being the camera built into my computer, and one being the uh, uh, document camera. So we're going to start with the Logitech Meetup camera. I'm going to go ahead and start the video. And there I am. Uh, I'm also going to I'm going to unmute myself as well. So now I can be heard uh, in the Zoom meeting. Uh, one thing to check as well, you want to make sure that your audio is set to the meetup camera as well. Uh, if you go into the settings uh, for the audio, the carrot next to that, you just want to go in, up to and make sure your uh, microphone that's selected is the echo canceling speakerphone. It'll also say Logitech Meetup here as well. Um, you can also select your uh, speaker output as well here, which if the, the Meetup camera has a camera built into it, has a microphone built into it, it also has a speaker. Uh, it has actually quite a good speaker, so if you would like to hear everybody's voice coming out of that speaker on the Meetup camera, you can do so by selecting uh, the speakerphone uh, Logitech Meetup as its speaker. Otherwise, select the Extron Scaler. Uh, that output of the audio will be the room audio, so you'll hear it coming out of the speakers in the ceiling. Uh, a couple things to note, uh, uh, to touch again on the uh, remote control. What's nice about this is that this camera actually has optical zoom built into it, which is, kind of works like a, like a regular camera, where I can actually zoom in to a location on the board. So if I want to do some writing or look at a very specific, uh, specific thing I'm writing about, a graph, whatever, uh, this will allow me to frame my shot better. Because as you can see, when I'm zoomed all the way out, the shot's pretty wide. It makes it a little more difficult to read what's on the board. Uh, so I'm going to write, hello, my name is Forrest. Now that lettering is pretty standard size, uh, but if I wanted to zoom in a bit and frame my shot a little better, now that becomes a little bit more easier to read. All right, so that's a good thing to be aware of. Uh, what's also nice about the articulating arm portion of this, I'm going to zoom back out, is that I can now take the camera, hopefully I don't make you seasick here, I'm going to swing us around and face the classroom. Now what's particularly nice about this is that you have a preview on your computer. So the resident computer will show what the camera is showing, especially if you're in full screen, so that you can actually make sure that as many students as possible are being seen by the camera. It's fairly wide angle. It does work pretty nice. So I'm going to Fix it a little bit more here, tilt it down a little bit, and then I can see a pretty good portion of the room. Now, I just want to double check that our video settings are correct. Uh, if you go into, uh, click the carrot next to the video, uh, a stop video button, you can click video settings. A few things you should double check is that you are, your video is enabled for HD. If you click that button, your video, you see how it gets cropped down, you'll lose a little, bit of, a little bit of quality. Just make sure that you turn that on. That's pretty standard. Leave it on whenever possible. Uh, you also want to make sure that your settings, uh, that the mirror my video button is unchecked. Uh, that just flips the image. Uh, that works too for the document camera. If the image is flipped, you will see, and for the students in the classroom, we'll see everything backwards. Uh, just make sure it's not checked and you'll look normal. So I'm going to go ahead and uncheck mirror, make sure enable HD is turned on. So here's an example. Uh, if I happen to be uh, like a standard student uh, sitting in a classroom, I am about as far away uh, in this space as I can be from the camera. Uh, this is what I sound like without my mask on. Uh, you should be hearing me quite well. This is the audio from the Meetup camera. Uh, I will put on a mask just so that you can get an idea of what that sounds like as well. You may lose a little bit of clarity uh, while they're wearing the mask, but uh, if the student projects a little bit, they should be able to be heard no matter where they are in most spaces in the class. 
Now I want to talk a little bit about the document cameras that are installed in the spaces. Uh, this is a Wolf Vision uh, document camera. Uh, they do allow for a digital connection to the computer via USB. You just open the document camera as normal. You want to make sure that you are turning it on. Once it's on, uh, you will actually operate the camera very typical to uh, what you would do normally. There's a zoom function, uh, there's a focus function, uh, there's a freeze function. It should still all operate as normal. Uh, so what we will do at this point is go into our settings in zoom. We will change the video source to the Wolf Vision video capture. Now, don't be scared. This will take a moment to do the switch over, so give it a moment. Now, this is the document camera. So now if I take, so if I just want to show a document, I can take the document, lay it down. You can zoom out using the functions right on the document camera itself. Easily be able to show document, show multiple pages. If there's a very specific thing you want to show that's highly detailed. You can zoom in on it. And it'll refocus itself. If you if you would prefer to take notes, on the document camera, you can take a piece of paper. You can draw graphs. There's a little bell graph. Again, hello, my name is Forrest, and that shows up. Same, same thing here is if for whatever reason your writing is small or what you're showing is small, you can zoom in a little bit. The camera on the document camera is easily movable. Once you're done with the document camera, if you want to go right back to the meetup camera, you can do so. Just go back into your video settings, select Logitech Meetup, and the camera will switch back. I also wanted to quickly show a shot of the projection screen. Now this is a full screen version of Zoom that's open and I'm set my video to the document camera. So this again, this is how you would show what you're showing on the document camera in the classroom for the students that are here. But it's also able to show the students that are away the uh, image of the document camera uh, because it's being chosen as a source. Again, I want to touch real quick on the idea of uh, that uh, in your video settings, the idea of having the original ratio uh, versus the 16 by 9 widescreen. Uh, as you can see, this has been cropped down. So if I zoom all the way out, that's as far as it'll go. If I go into my video settings and select original ratio, you'll notice that you can see a lot more. And that's important. So if you're, if you're not getting enough, uh, enough uh, image, uh, enough of your writing on the image and you're getting it cut off, that's what it is. The camera that's on the, uh, on the Walt Vision document camera is designed to show all of what the white space is around the border here. So if you're not seeing it, check that ratio and that should fix your problem. Uh, on the website, uh, we do have training for Zoom. We also have Zoom training available through our office. So if you're unfamiliar with some of these functions that I've spoken about and want a little bit more training and in-depth training, uh, please contact our office at avs at hamilton.edu and we can see about getting you trained up. Uh, I just wanted to touch a little bit on recording a video. Uh, if you are going to uh, be uh, recording uh, directly to Zoom, uh, as usual, you would go into uh, your meeting and there is a record button at the bottom of your uh, the bar here. Uh, if you have a pro license, when you click on this, you will see record on this computer or record to the cloud. Uh, if you happen to be into, in a classroom uh, as normal, we would say record to the cloud. That way uh, you don't have to copy the file off the computer uh, before you go. Um, that'll make it a little bit easier. You can access, access it from your office after class uh, and do with the file as you will at that point. Uh, another thing to touch on is 
we recommend that you store your files, uh, your video files on Google Drive and share them with your students that way. Uh, to do that, you would download the video on your computer and upload it, uh, download it from Zoom and then upload it to Google Drive from there. Um, you can use Zoom to share, uh, the, I would read, but again, we want for a long-term storage solution, Google Drive's the way to go. If you have any questions about that and how to do so, please contact the help desk uh, and they will be able to give you instructions on how to do that as well. We hope this video has been helpful for you to help get a better idea of what the technology in the classrooms can do to help you uh, teach this coming fall and spring. Uh, please, if you have any questions, the best way to contact the audiovisual office is avs at hamilton.edu. Uh, we're obviously uh, willing and able to help you with anything that you need regarding the uh, classroom technology.